I'm sure you know what I was just drinking. If not, then dad's at what underscore four underscore life can tell you. And I'm not going to lie, I had to redo that intro like five times. Anyways, welcome back to Eraserhead Podfix. Today we're going to be reading A Kid Over the Railing. I meant to post this earlier, like two hours ago, but um, my friend came back in town and I need to go see her, so yeah, my bad. <laughs> Anyways, this is A Kid Over the Railing by an orphan account. Um, It is 2,000 word. it's about 2,000 and a half words. It's a one-shot. And here's the summary. Izuku has a tough day. First, his bully tells him to take a swan dive. Then, he's attacked by a villain. Then, All Might tells him he can't be a hero. And to top it all off, apparently his mother died because of his stupidness. Izuku honestly can't will himself to continue. He has nothing left to grasp onto. Luckily for him... A grumpy hero is willing to fill that position. Trigger warning, suicide. Everything just felt numb. His head was pounding, his vision spinning, and his whole whole body shaking with onshed tears. All Might, the All Might, had told him that he couldn't be a hero. Number one hero, symbol of peace, worldwide icon, Izuku's entire life had told him that he couldn't ever be a hero. Izuku wasn't naive enough to believe that he could be some flashy hero or even go to a fancy school. All he wanted was to save people, however small that amount may be. That's all he ever wanted. So when he asked All Might if he could be a hero, if he could make a difference, if he could save people, however naive that dream may be, he truly believed the hero would just give him the answer he so very craved. Because that was All Might's thing. He would preach that everybody could be a hero. So naturally, he would reassure those questioning themselves that you too can be a hero. But at last, no. Azuku, quirkless, stupid, weak, better off dead, Deku, truly was too little of a human for such a title. He thought that even though he was quirkless and weak, he could make up for it with his quirk and battle analysis, and with that, he could save a few people. But now, he's starting to reconsider. Maybe he really would just be better taking a swan dive off the roof and praying to be born with a quirk in his next life. He always bothered people, was always in their way, annoying them and such. So maybe they'd be happier with him gone. That counts as saving people, right? Little him would have only thought saving people could be from villain attacks, natural disasters, thieves, and such. But maybe saving people could also mean saving them from having to deal with quirkless Deku. Maybe if he took a jump off this roof, that that would make him a hero. He'd save so many people that way. The boy was snapped out of his spiraling thoughts by a happy chime coming from his phone. He took a second to retake in his surroundings and realized that the sun was soon to be down. Izuku himself was standing idly stiff on the rooftop of some office building, the same one that All Might had been on only a couple hours ago. He shifted to his other foot and reached into his pocket, pulling out his phone. Izuku himself has no friends to give his numbers and therefore little contacts. His only saved numbers being Inko's and Aunt Mitsuki's, although he hasn't called in years, which is why it surprised him to get a call. He knew it wasn't spam because he altered his device to block out, block out all spam or spam callers, so it has to be somebody important, he concluded. He swiped accept just before the call would have went to voicemail and led the phone, phone up to his ear. Hip. Hello? He asked sheepishly. Hello, this is Musutafu Central Police calling for a Midoriya Izuku. The serious tone of the other line came. What would the police want? Izuku thought, already getting anxious. Um, th- th- that would be... He briefly stopped to clear his throat, cursing himself for his mumbling issue before continuing. That's me. 
The voice continued after, after almost immediately. Okay, well, I'm sorry to inform you, but your mother, Midoriya Ingo, has passed away this evening. All of a sudden, it felt like he couldn't breathe. There was no way. His mom, she's not gone. She's fine. She, She's home safe. This was just a prank. That must be it. No, she, she's home safe. He mumbled it into the phone. I know, I know she is. A deep sigh came from the other line. Sorry, kid. Denial is natural, but I don't have enough time to try and reassure you. Inko passed away in a villain attack around 4.15 this afternoon. A sledge-like villain got a hold of some boy with an explosion quirk and said, and said explosions got to one of the nearby buildings and she was crushed. Sorry, kid. He paused a bit before continuing with some other half-hearted apology and hanging up. Fizuku didn't hear any of that, though, because he was too busy processing what he had he just heard. A, a sludge villain? There's no way that wasn't the villain. That wasn't the villain he was attacked by earlier, but All Might captured him. Un unless... Fuck. The bottle wasn't in the hero's pocket when he got up here, was it? Fizuku must have knocked it out of his pocket when he grabbed onto the man's legs. It's his fault. His mother was dead. His fault. If he had just killed himself years ago, she would still be alive. If he had just never been born, she would be fine. If he, if he had even been smart enough to just not have grabbed onto All Might, she would have been fine. But now, she's not. She's really gone. She's dead, and she's never coming back. In the distance, the boy heard some heartbreaking scream. He wished he could help that person, but when he realized, but then he realized, he was the one screaming. He didn't have anything left. His mother was the only person in the entire world who loved him. His mother was a wonderful, sweet, caring woman, somebody who supported him and hugged him tight as he cried. Hizuku remembers when his mother would play heroes with him, when they talk about hero names like Lil All Might and many all light for hours but now his mother is gone he had nothing quirkless azuku was a weakling he had no friends no family no goals no future all he did was pester the people who were unlucky enough to be stuck with him in their lives before he could process what he was doing the boy was walking towards the edge of the building and leaning against the railing stepping over said railing and holding onto it from the opposite side. He looked up at the oran orangery sunset. It was beautiful. A great last view. The boy stood basking in the sun for hours, appre appreciating life for the little time he gave himself. It must have been around midnight when s something disturbed his gazing. gazing. A shuffling sound from the other side of the rooftop. He doesn't care what it is. He doesn't have time to be bothered or stopped. With that logic in mind, he finally leans forward. Izuku falls off the railing and off the building's roof. The wind whistles in his ears, and he feels like he's floating. This moment, experience before he hits the ground, is blissful. He can almost forget the pain deep in his heart. He closes his eyes and prepares himself for his final breath. When the wind around him stops... Irritated, his eyebrows twitches up and he looks at his torso. Some white scarf is wrapped around himself, holding him up from the top of the building, stopping his fall. Animal-like, he growls at this realization and starts trying to shuffle out from the scarf when it suddenly pulls him back up the solid ground of the roof. Izuku takes a look at the person who bothered him during his attempt, but froze when he realized who it actually was, a racer head. A racer didn't really feel like patrolling today. He was told to patrol some different route in hope of locating a local vigilante and taking them in for a rest. A bother, really. Yet yeah, here he was, patrolling the streets at 2 a.m. He was jumping from one to another when he noticed a figure on a, roo on a roof nearby. The figure was small. The figure was over the edge of the railing, holding on but leaning back to gaze at the sky. A suicide attempt. 
Eraserhead is an underground hero, so he's no newbie when it comes to coaxing, coaxing someone down, but when it's a kid, it just pains him. His mental health almost takes a toll after, always takes a toll after seeing a child like this on the edge of death by choice. It reminds him of himself as a teenager, trying to off himself after Obro's death. Thinking about that day pains him to remember, but seeing other people go through as much pain as him at such young ages, it's just tough in a different way, you know? He rushes over to the rooftop and starts to quietly run over to the kid. He has a sloppy plan to just sneak up behind the kid and get him away from the roof before talking to him. Whilst that's not the most pleasant method, it will at least secure the kid from jumping. But oh... He wasn't paying proper attention, and he tripped. Of course, God really couldn't let him have anything, huh? As soon as he trips, he steadies himself and slaps his head towards the kid, praying that they wouldn't try and do anything after hearing him. These worries seem to actually be accurate, though, as the second he looks over, the child is ty typing over the edge, letting go. The adrenaline hits him as buckets of panic flood in. He yells a useless kid as he rushes forward capture weapon in hand he leans over the railing and shoots his capture weapon out praying to all of the gods that he will feel the weight of somebody start to pull on his neck and thankfully he does he caught the kid he actually managed to catch the kid seconds before hitting the ground that is eraser head heaves a sigh and starts to pull on pull on the kid a little at this point the kid realizes something stop their fall and so they open their eyes. At this point, the kid realized something stopped their fall, and so they open their eyes. They scowl at the weapon and try to get out. Shoto wants to be surprised that they're this eager to die, but really, of course they are. They did just try to jump off of a roof. The hero tugs on the weapon again, tightening it around the kid's waist in an attempt to stop them from escaping. He managed to get the kid up within a few seconds and finally got a good look at the kid. They're short and thin, and they're older than 15. The kid has messy green hair, freckles, and dull green eyes. Just barely, he could make out the glistening of tears on their face. Eraser's heart clenching, clenching at the sight. They're wearing a middle school uniform that is slightly burnt. The way they're, they're sticking to one side of their foot, insisting that may, they may be injured somehow. Bullying or abuse, perhaps. Shoda finds himself staring at the kid for a little too long to be comfortable and looks away. Except when he glances back, the child is staring at him, too. Mouth slightly agape and eyes widening. E e Eraserhead? They say in no less than an exasperated tone. And holy shit, the kid recognizes him. How? He realizes his mistake of staying quiet too long and staring into the boy's eyes when he... When he said, when said boy diverts his eyes and turns his face away, face red. Sorry, the, sorry, the hero m mumbles quietly, glancing at the ground himself for a moment. Shoto looks back at the kid. How do you recognize me? The hero asks, curiosity getting the best of him at the moment. Seems like a good question choice too, because the kid looks back up, beating his eyes. But this time, they have a small flame laying like, hidden under behind the layers or hurt. He feels himself relax a little, and then the kid responds. I, I was really interested in in heroes. I, I, ha I had a bit of a ho hobby where I would a analyze them. They, they respond sheepishly, rubbing the back of his neck and looking anywhere but at the older man. But oh, how his heart's How his heart hurts with the past tense way the kid was speaking. Was? He questions gently. He meets the kid's eyes and the kid stares for a moment before sighing and looking at his red shoes. E yeah, it, it's for the b better that I, I, I stop tr trying to be a hero. The green haired one mutters. Sounding utterly defeated. What makes you think you can't be a hero? 
eraser questions. Because if the fire in his eyes says anything, he can be a hero if that's what he wanted. Shota mentally sighs for already getting attached to this kid, despite knowing nothing about him. He can already imagine Namuri and Hisashi teasing him if they were here. Uh, uh, I'm Kliss, they whisper, staring intently at the ground. Shota understands discrimination for quirks and knows the statistics of those who are quirkless, making it sting all the more. He can already paint an image of this kid behind beat, being beat and suicide baited for something as insignificant as quirk, quirk status. Maybe, just maybe, he can help the kid in his own way, he thinks. You can still be a hero if you have the right motivations. He, so, he softly says, a fond look in his eyes. At this, the younger's eyes, the younger's eyes shoot up, and his bottom lip bolt, blubs out ever so slightly. Tears well up in his eyes, and he looks like he's about to have a breakdown at what Shoda just said. In the back of his mind, Shoda wonders how many people, if any, have told this kid that they believe in them. Now, while he understands that he is a busy person as a teacher and a hero. He can't help but wanting to take this kid under his wing, train him, show him that he can be a hero, and watch as he does just that. It's been a couple seconds after he spoke, and now the tears overwhelm the kid, pouring down their face, and before he knows exactly what he's doing, he reaches over and pulls the kid into a hug. The kid startles for a second before practically melting into him, grabbing handfuls of fabric and leaving a wet spot of tears in the center of his jumpsuit. Maybe I could train you, Shota whispers, hoping that he didn't misread the kid at all. What? The kid crying, the crying one startles, mouth agape once again. I said I could train you, if you want that at least, he responds, pulling away from the other. A couple seconds of silent eye contact, and the kid finally breaks, whispering yes over and over and thanking him. Of course, kid. Armazawa Shoda, he, him. I Izuku Midoriya, he or they. Hello, Midoriya, he mumbles in response, happy that his plan to mentor this kid worked. C could you just call me, call me Izuku? He asks, looking at Shoda with careful eyes, radiating nervous energy. Of course, Izuku. Call me Shoda then. His now mentor responds. Izuku looks at him, smiling softly and genuinely. The memory of this kid leaning over the railing crosses his mind, and he wills himself to question the kid. What happened? Why did you jump? A racer had asked in the gentlest tone he could manage, and for a split second, that dull look in the kid's eyes come back, but he replaces it with tears. Izuku tells him everything about how his childhood friend turned bully, turned, told him to kill himself, and then how he was attacked by a villain and met All Might, and the experience he had with All Might. Aizawa feels a little blinded by rage just thinking about it. No wonder the kid looks so miserably. And then the kid tells him how his mother died, the one person who loved and supported him when no other would. It broke his heart having to watch Izuku sob about his mother's death. Izuku told him about how he believed it was his fault for knocking the villain out of All Might's pants. Aizawa insisted that was incorrect. They sat for hours, just holding on to each other, Izuku sobbing his heart out to the elder man. But at the end of it all, Shota was attached to this kid. His kid. And that was okay, because he would be able to make a difference for the kid. That would start with, that would start with using his emergency foster license. All right, everyone, that's the end of A Kid Over the Railing. I really like this one. I'm sorry if I was too quiet. Um, It's like, it's like 1 a.m. right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I really like this one so much. It's really sad and unfortunate how so many things happened in the same day. Poor little Izuku, our little green bean, little broccoli. Good thing we have died solid to the rescue. Oh, God, that's, that's heartbreaking. 
Anyways, since that's the end of this pod, Vic, I hope you all have a fantastic day. And make sure to go check out the other videos, because I'm sure if you like this one, you'll like the other pod Vicks I've posted. Other than that, have a fantastic day.